Hello, and thanks for joining me on this episode of Simply Saturday. My name is Julie, and this is Stamp with Julie Baum. For today's Simply Saturday, I'm going to be showing you another card that is fast and easy to make. We will be using the stamp from the Heartfelt Hexagon stamp set, and also the Coordinating Punch. And then we're going to be using this paper, which is called um, del mm, I think it's Delightful Florals. I think that's the name of it. Um, and I am using Fresh Freesia cardstock for my base, and I'm using Shaded Spruce for my ink. At the end of the video, I'll show you one other card that is very similar, but with um, just a different color card base and different ribbon. All right, so my card base, Fresh Freesia, five and a half by eight and a half inches. I have already scored it at four and a quarter, and we're going to fold and reinforce that fold with the, my bone folder. All right, this white piece is Julie's layering template number two. And if you don't use my templates, then you'll have to do some measuring. And this measures four inches by five and a quarter. This piece is going to go on the inside panel of the card, but we do need to, oh, look, see, I have cut it uh, incorrectly because it's too long. So let's see where I went wrong. Yep, it's five and a half instead of five and a quarter. So what I said was correct, but what I'm showing you was not correct. So let me trim that down just real quick. All right, layering template number two is four inches by five and a quarter. All right, now we're back on track. All right, even though this is the inside panel, um, it does need to get attached to the card in the early phase here because we're going to be doing some stamping that we need to go um, very precisely placed. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is create the inside first, then we'll go to the front of the card. Now I have a piece of designer series paper, as I mentioned, and this is also Julie's layering template number two. So that's four by five and a quarter. And then I have a three eighths inch piece by whatever. It doesn't matter your length as long as it's um, longer than five and a quarter because we're going to trim it down. So first thing we're gonna do is attach our little scrap strip to this white piece for the inside of the card. So I'm gonna get my multi-purpose adhesive. And as you've seen me do before, when I'm adding a strip of paper that's going end to end onto my cardstock, I'd like to have that strip be a little bit longer than necessary and that way it can go all the way across the card, end to end, with no white card stock showing on accident, like if you didn't quite um, measure super precisely. So I'm gonna put this on my grid just to help me go straight, and this is actually going to go right in the middle of this line, like so. Again, I'm basically eyeballing it, but having a grid paper or a grid mat or your glass mat, which mine happens to be on its way, I'll be very excited to switch over to my glass mat. It has those um, grid lines and measurements on it for you as well. Okay, so I've glued this on. It's going end to end. It's hanging off the edges a teeny bit so I can take my paper snips and just snip that off to clean up the edges. And now my piece truly goes end to end without any little mistakes on the edge. Okay, this piece is now going to get attached inside the card with that decorative strip at the top. So I'm eyeballing my borders all the way around this white piece sliding it as necessary and get that into place. All right, that's the inside. All right, for the front, I'll take this piece and I'm going to just go ahead and attach it to the front of the card, right there on my Fresh Freesia card base. Uh, 
Okay, again, looking at all my borders, top, bottom, right, and left, so that it looks pleasing to the eye, and go ahead and get that attached. Now, I'm going to take my heartfelt hexagon punch next. We're actually going to punch through the front of the card. Now, this is a little bit thick, because I've got my cardstock layer and the DSP, um, but it will work. So again, it's not ideal perhaps, but it will work. So what I'm gonna do is take the punch, I'm gonna move it from this edge over to about where I want it, but then it's gonna fit all the way up inside the card. So it's pretty easy to figure out your placement. So it's going all the way up as far as it'll go. And then I'm just looking at the right side. I want maybe about that half inch over there and make sure it's straight. And we're gonna punch that out. Like I said, it's kind of thick, so it's a little, little heavy duty work for your punch. All right, I might even use this on the envelope. I'm gonna think about that for a minute. Okay, so we've got our card, we've got the inside. We're going to stamp our sentiment right inside here. As I mentioned, we're using heartfelt hexagon. Now, I'm happy to say that it's not very often that I need a sympathy card, but when I need one, I need one. And you usually need it like that day because you've gotten word that something has happened and you need to reach out to someone. So this card is going to be um, a sympathy card and we're gonna use this image here and my shaded spruce ink pad. Now the reason that we did all those steps in that order is because I'm actually going to stamp the image right down through the hole that we made with our punch and um, it's gonna look great inside that hexagon. And I can just line it up and center it inside that shape. I'm gonna lay it down and press, and I'm gonna hold it for a second. I really wanna make sure that that ink has a moment to settle into the cardstock without being in such a rush to like stamp and pick it up. There we have it. It looks simple, elegant, beautiful, kind of understated. And that is how we're going to finish the card. Now, if this was Let's Eat Cake or sending you lots of love and hugs, I would imagine putting lots of little sparkly rhinestones on here, maybe some other extras. But we're going to tie um, just kind of a conservative little bow because it needs a little something, but we don't want it too fussy. At least that's what I think for a sympathy card. So I do have a piece of fresh freesia ribbon. This was some ribbon that has since retired, but I still have it and am happy to use it. So I'm gonna lay this so that we're going to tie. I'm not even gonna tie a bow. I'm just gonna tie a knot. Again, I don't want it too fussy. So I'm just gonna tie my knot. I'm gonna slide this down. You have time to position it once you kind of get it into place. About like so. All right, so also after I tie my, kn my knot, I can um, even it up if I need to and slide it into place. So I'm holding it really tight with my finger to hold that knot, and then I'm using all the rest of my fingers to create the knot by pulling the ends of the ribbon, and this is nice if you have a friend nearby, but when you don't, you've had to learn how to tie your bows and knots without assistance of other people's fingers. <laughs> all right, there's my knot and I just wanna kind of fiddle with these ribbon ends. Okay, now this was about 18 inches of ribbon, and as you can see, it was plenty. So you might want to use the ribbon off of the spool first and then cut it because 18 inches of ribbon was uh, a little bit of overkill. All right, and then I'm going to, oh, I'm gonna take that little scrap off my scissors. And now the scrap is stuck to my finger. Okay, and then I'm just going to do a quick little trim so that the tails aren't quite so long, like so. I'm telling you, fast and easy, but beautiful and elegant. All right, there we have it. 
you can tell on the inside if your ribbon is straight or not. So see, it's not quite straight. So I'm gonna slide this part up a little bit. Come on. There we go. Now it looks more straight. Maybe that was too much. And so I know it's straight on this side. If you're worried about it sliding or moving around, a great way to um, add a quick fix is to just take a glue dot. And all I'm gonna do is anchor underneath the knot. So it still has the ability to slide around a little bit, but it's not gonna slide too far if the knot is anchored. So I'm sticking that glue dot right under the knot, pressing it down. And now that will keep it from going too far because it's stuck down right there. All right, let me show you the other one that I made. This one I used Berry Burst cardstock instead of the Fresh Freesia. And I tied it with a little bit of Lemon Lime Twist ribbon in the same fashion, just with a knot. And then I anchored the knot down with a glue dot. So that it looks really beautiful on either one. And because I just opened that card, I will share with you something that happened. When I was creating this card, I had my cardstock all cut and I realized that this white piece, I just grabbed it out of my, um, my little bucket that I hold, that holds all my scraps. And I thought, oh, it's the perfect size already. And then I got my strip on there. When I went to glue it on, I could tell that it was actually a little too short. It's only five inches long instead of five and a quarter, but look, it's still fine. So I'm showing you that because things don't always have to be exactly recipe perfect if you're getting inspiration from someone's video like this. This piece is a little bit smaller, maybe too small, um, compared to the original dimension, but it totally works. So just remember, as far as I know, there are no measurement police coming around to check your cards and see if you did it a certain way. If you think it looks good and the measurements differ a little bit from something you heard, that's totally fine. It's part of your own creativity. So just go with it. All right, there we have the Berry Burst cardstock, the Fresh Freesia cardstock, and that is our Simply Saturday card for today. Thanks so much for sticking with me. I love that you tune in each Saturday to see what kind of fast and easy card I'm going to make. And I'll put some information for you in the description box below this video, and that will be helpful, I hope. I would love to hear your comments. And until next time, happy stamping.